This video is the fourth in a series that explores phase changes in astronomy, and in particular investigates the creation of nitrogen geysers on Neptune's moon Triton. Geysers were unexpectedly observed in 1989 when the Voyager 2 probe flew by Triton. In 2014, the number of solar system bodies displaying active eruptions was four. Earth, Jupiter's moon Io, Triton, and most recently, Saturn's moon Enceladus. Geysers are eruptions of volatile material that have been heated underground. Geysers on Earth consist of water in liquid, boiling liquid, and gas phases. On Triton, geysers start as relatively hot gas underground that erupt through the surface and condense in the extremely low pressure atmosphere. The gas carries dusty debris with it high above the surface of the moon. Several geysers have been observed on Triton spewing nitrogen laced with dust and dirt. In these eruptions, the particles are carried to altitudes as high as 8 kilometers and are then blown downwind before being deposited on Triton's surface creating a streak mark. Location is an important clue to the cause of the geysers. All of the geysers have been located near the subsolar point where direct sunlight hits. So even though sunlight on Neptune is about 1 90th of the intensity Earth receives, it must be responsible for the geysers. Researchers theorize that Triton likely has a transparent layer of frozen nitrogen on its surface, which creates something analogous to the greenhouse effect. Sunlight passes through the transparent outer layer until it reaches a darker opaque layer underneath and is absorbed. This slightly raises the temperature below the nitrogen ice surface, allowing sublimation to occur. The warmer gas migrates through cracks in the ice and pressure builds up until it breaks through the surface and an eruption occurs. A temperature increase of just 4 Kelvin above the ambient temperature of 38 Kelvin is thought to be sufficient to create eruptions to the elevations observed. The warm gas traveling upward at high speed is quickly cooled, becoming solid, and forms nitrogen snow which falls back to the surface. We can once again use our bell jar vacuum chamber to display a phenomenon that is closely related to the Triton geysers. We will place a sample of liquid nitrogen in the chamber, initially at atmospheric pressure. We then place the bell jar over the sample and use the vacuum pump to greatly lower the pressure within the jar. Note that when the pressure falls, the liquid nitrogen begins to boil vigorously, occasionally blowing the liquid nitrogen upwards where it becomes a gas. Some of the nitrogen gas then solidifies, falling back to the floor of the chamber as nitrogen snow, while the rest is pumped out of the chamber. More teaching materials are available on the web at astro.unl.edu.